If you have overlooked Pennsylvania as a state to move to, I think you're making a mistake. In this video, I'm gonna tell you why Pennsylvania is one of the best states to buy a house and call home in 2024 and beyond. In case you don't know, Pennsylvania is known as the Keystone State. It was the second state admitted into the union on December 12, 1787. It is surrounded by six states and stretches from the Delaware River to the shores of Lake Erie. It has a population of just over 13 million residents. Right now, I'm gonna give you some reasons why you should be part of that 13 million. Got it, get it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, statistically average. Yes, they are middle of the road on so many stats, it's actually humorous. Pennsylvania has very few stats or very few categories that they're really bad at and very few that they're really good at. Everything this state does is middle of the road. When it comes to healthcare, middle of the road, they're ranked 24th. When it comes to obesity rate, 23rd. Cost of living, 25th. Serial killers, 25th. Pet ownership rate, 23rd. Life expectancy, 27th. Crime rate, 25th. Domestic violence, 26th. Average IQ, 23rd. You get the point. Not too bad, not too good. Number nine, nature. If you don't know, Pennsylvania is one of the most beautiful states we have. Once you get out of the cities, at least. When it comes to their nature, they've got wooded areas everywhere. Water, lakes, streams, creeks. You can't walk 200 yards in the forest without running into some kind of spring or a creek or something like that. If you watch this channel long enough, you know I love Honesdale, Pennsylvania, which is in the northeastern part of the state, not too far from the New York border. I love the area around there. It's beautiful. Most people I've ever suggested they go visit, they always tell me how beautiful it is. There's great fishing, great hunting in this state. If you like the outdoors, I think this is one of the most overlooked states for outdoor activities. Number eight, the population is stalled. Pennsylvania has one of the lowest population growths in the nation. There are a few states that are actually losing population right now, West Virginia, Louisiana, and Illinois, but as far as the states that are still gaining population, they are the third lowest behind Connecticut and Michigan. Why is this good? Well, if you've got a stalled population, that means you won't have to worry about any significant price jumps in cost of living or housing, at least for the next handful of years. Pennsylvania is growing by about 2.2%. You have other states like Texas that are growing by 13%, Nevada 12%, Utah 15%, Colorado 12%, North Dakota is growing by 13%, and then you have a handful of states that are single-digit growth. Pennsylvania is there at the bottom of that, or towards the bottom, with 2.2%. This also means traffic won't be getting worse in most areas, and schools won't be getting overcrowded unless the state decides to close some schools to save some money. When you're in a place where people are just flooding in, dude, there's a demand, and companies and landlords will raise prices because there's a demand. If there's no demand, prices will stay steady, or they'll actually drop. I think Pennsylvania has a lot of years of staying steady ahead of them. Number seven, diverse living areas. Pennsylvania has a variety of cities and rural areas to choose from. They have tons of small towns that are absolutely beautiful. You can live in the farmland or you can live in one of the big cities. Pennsylvania, even though it does have one of the scariest neighborhoods in the world, which is Kensington, it's not that bad of a city in other places. Actually, most of that city is pretty decent. But all you ever hear about is the negatives. And Pittsburgh, really, for a major city, it's not that bad. Now, before you start saying, oh no, they got crime, they got every major city has crime. Every major city has bad neighborhoods. There's no urban paradise out there, trust me. But as far as big cities go, Philadelphia and Pittsburgh really aren't that bad. I want to be clear, don't compare them to perfect. Compare them to other major cities. What I really like about the eastern part of Pennsylvania, you could live in some really nice small towns and be close enough to major metro areas. Like I'd said earlier, Pennsylvania has water everywhere, so they have a lot of lakefront property that's pretty affordable in most places. Number six, natural disasters. Pennsylvania is one of the least likely states to experience any kind of natural disaster. They really don't get hurricanes or tropical storms. If they do, they're normally getting the tail end of one. 
Severe storms and flooding are the big ones in Pennsylvania. That's what they get hit with every year. With that comes a little bit of landslides, but since their mountains really aren't that steep or huge, their landslides are kind of slow moving most of the time. They also get some tornadoes, rarely, but they do get them. They get a few each year. Most of them really don't do anything. The last time they had some serious ones was in 1985. Two F4 and one F5 tornadoes began in Ohio and traveled across to Pennsylvania. So to be clear, they do get some natural disasters, but compared to other states, they're not that bad. Number five, good schooling. Pennsylvania is known for having some of the greatest universities this country has to offer. On top of that, their K-12 grades perform very well more often than not. Pennsylvania is ranked second in the nation in high school graduation rate with 95.89% of their students graduating with a piece of paper. When you look at their universities, they have the University of Pennsylvania, they have Carnegie Mellon, where I studied modern dance. You have Pennsylvania State University, University of Pittsburgh, Villanova, Temple University, Drexel, LaSalle, and many others. And no, I really didn't study modern dance at Carnegie Mellon. When I worked at Netflix, I had to take an escalation and this guy was yelling at me and finally to knock him off his feet. I said, sir, I didn't study modern dance at Carnegie Mellon to be spoken to like this. Stopped him dead in his tracks. There's this long pause. He's all, why would you study modern dance? All I said was, because I feel music. He hung up on me. Yeah, great schools, great universities. If you've got kids, move them to Pennsylvania. You'll be doing them a favor. Number four, it's affordable. Pennsylvania is ranked 15th in the nation for affordability, meaning overall. When you break it down to cost of living, they're ranked 11th. In goods and services, utilities, they're ranked 9th. Homeowners insurance, they're ranked 13th in the nation. Car insurance, they're ranked 16th in the nation. They've got a few others that are pretty low, but it all boils down to they are ranked 15th in the nation for affordability. Oh, and one I forgot to bring up is their taxes. They're middle of the road there too. Ranked 24th in the nation. Number three, quality of life. The quality of life in Pennsylvania is outstanding. I think it's better than where they rank it. It's actually ranked 11th in the nation. With the great outdoors that they have, it's a great state for families, good schools, decent crime rate, cultural and historical events all the time, very diverse state. The quality of life, I think, should be better, but the professionals say they're ranked 11th in the nation. That's not bad. Quality of life brings people in more often than you probably think. Number two, home prices. Pennsylvania is very affordable when it comes to home prices. They're surrounded by some states with some of the highest home prices, like New York, New Jersey, Connecticut's not too far away, Maryland, and Delaware. They're all very expensive when it comes to home prices. Of course, they're also next to Ohio and West Virginia, where home prices are dirt cheap. So Pennsylvania's on the lower end, but right in the middle there. Here's the stats. The average home value in Pennsylvania is $254,722 right now. Home prices normally stay around 10% lower than the national average in this state. You know, it fluctuates a little bit, but normally it's around 10% lower. In 2023, the average was 8.6% lower than the national average. Pittsburgh is considered one of the most affordable cities for real estate in the country, at least cities that aren't totally destroyed, like East St. Louis, Camden, New Jersey, or Detroit. All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to Pennsylvania, there is a link for a website called Home and Money in the description area below. This is a really cool website that will help you out with the whole buying process, including getting you in touch with a real estate agent in whatever area you want to move to. It's a good website. All right, on to number one. And number one, the people. That's right. The people are the best reason to move to Pennsylvania. The locals are, the best way to describe them is authentic and friendly. Especially when you grow up someplace like Southern California, where everyone's so fake, you go and you visit Pennsylvania and they're, they're not like that at all. You never feel like you're getting anything but who they really are. Pennsylvanians are down to earth, compassionate, caring folks who don't shy away from a hard day's work. I've never experienced anything but good people in this state, at least outside the airport there in Philadelphia. Nothing but a-holes working there. 
All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.